Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Panini Prism World Cup Soccer. Half case, pick your team number seven. All card ship, a lot of great stuff here. We did a filler, so we split up that combo list. So now it's all, it's all split up here. Pick your team seven. Thanks everyone for getting in. Thanks to the people who bought their spot straight up. And thanks to the people who uh, who took a chance in those team randoms. If you have a little rooftop next to you, that means you won that in the team random. Who has uh, who has last spot mojo in this? Now this is the, if you notice in the background, this is the second half of the case. Break eight actually filled up first. So first to fill, first to break. Break eight filled up first, so seven ends up being the second half of the case. Daniel Smith with Australia gets the last spot mojo starred next to his name. Now we like to say that last spot mojo 70% of the time hits 100% of the time. All right, good luck everybody. The baseball and the big base baseball news of the night: NL MVP Paul Goldschmidt, AL MVP Aaron Judge. Not, not, not too many shockers there. Soccer news: I think Sadio Mane, a former Liverpool man, Sadio Mane, is going to miss the World Cup for his country, Senegal. What other, uh, I mean, the World Cup's right on, right upon us. The home country, Qatar, will get its uh, get a standalone game to kick off the World Cup. That'll be on Sunday. And then the rest of the groups, and Group A starts on Monday, and so on and so forth, and, and we're underway. I don't know what else is going on right here. Argentina call up Almada Correa after injuries. U.S. men's national team recruit a Qatari club for World Cup prep. Rodrigo saying uh, favorites tag means nothing to Brazil. Is it still many World Cup prison breaks will have? No, there are no more. No more prison World Cup. The personal breaks channel those guys are more hungry for uh, for these Prism World Cups than the uh, group breaking side. So they gobbled up all of our cases. So we don't have any more. We may get some more. We may have some more on order, but I can't assure you that they'll be at the same price. It could be more. And we're going to lead off with Paul Scholes. Scholesy, classic. That is for Michael and the Three Lions. And then we've got Abdu Diallo for Senegal. He'll be without Sadio Mane. That's a two ninety nine. And there's Thiago for Brazil. That'll be for Ryan Heinz. And got a nice Gabriel Martinelli base rookie card. Tommy saying luck has a lot to do with winning in, in soccer, not just talent. Yeah, especially in group stages where you're only playing a few games and the knockout stages. The other, uh, correct, Sam. There's David Rom to 199 for Germany. That will be for Brian.
We got Rafael Liao, 320 out of 399 for Portugal. Ryan Hines, that could be a surprise team in the World Cup. There's Jao Felix. Jao Felix for Ryan Hines in Portugal. Nice, another one. Not his rookie card, but another, another one of those young stars on that Portugal team. Along with Liverpool's Diogo Jota. And we got Jan Sommer, 338 out of 399 for Switzerland. That's going to go to Nick. And we've got, we got a connections insert, silver. Nice, for the USA. That's going to be for Ed. Not sure how we're going to do this year, but I've been saying it a lot. I think next four years, when the World Cup is in North America, the U.S. might be primed to make a really great run. Wow, Phil Foden vowing to reach Neymar Mbappe level. That's a strong statement from Phil Foden. Bruno Fernandez saying, I have no problem with Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, our countrymen, they wouldn't have a problem. That Cristiano Ronaldo uh, debate seems to be, uh, or saga seems to be pretty interesting drama. Uh, check this out. The, the national teams of Argentina and Uruguay have each taken 2,000 pounds of meat, 900 kilos, with them to the World Cup so players and staff can have a taste of home during the tournament in Qatar. In the case of, this is according to ESPNFC.com, in the case of Uruguay, the country's National Institute of Meat, the INAC, reached an agreement with the Uruguay FA earlier this month to supply the meat. A quote, the national team is being accompanied by the best nourishment the uh, Uruguay FA president, Ignacio Alonso, said. The uh, Uruguay, or a AUF, F Football uh, Association, the FA, is a historic ambassador of our country and will take it with another ambassador, which is Uruguayan meat, the best meat in the world. Argentina and Uruguay are, cons are among the biggest consumers of meat in the world, and the asado is considered one of the most popular dishes. Cards are a little slippery and they're they bend a little bit, so they're sometimes they're a little. One of the positive dishes in the country, the asado is made of different uh, cuts of meats and sausage and cooked on the grill. Both nationally has also made asados in recent World Cups as well. Yeah, you get all these crazy stories. There's Angel Di Maria for Argentina. You get all these fun, crazy stories when you get when we get closer to the World Cup. And we got Ricardo Pepe, Manga. Nice. That sort of, that, that, that Japanese cartoon style right here going to Ed and the USA. There's uh, Saad Al Shib, 62 out of 299. That's for Cutter. There's a rookie silver. Uh, Shouchi Gonda, rookie silver for Japan. That's going to go to Jim. Any guesses on this redemption? 51 out of 299, Abdullah Al Malki for Saudi Arabia. That'll be for Daniel Smith. No, uh, the landmark from break eight was uh, Gareth Bale from Wales.
There's Eden Hazard for Belgium. But the USA did get the manga card here in break eight, or break seven, that is. Got a Jonathan David here for Canada for Grant. And a Lionel Messi, 175 out of 199, purple for Ryan in Argentina. It's last World Cup, you would imagine, right? And Cristiano Ronaldo's last World Cup. Not getting any younger. We got Anthony. 11 out of 399 for Brazil. That'll be for Ryan. All right. And who do we have here? We have 2022 Prism World Cup signatures, card number 57. It is Lucas Podolski for Poland. That's going to go to Nicholas. It's a team that can make a little noise, Poland. Make a little noise. Wow, David saying the Sokka manga card I pulled for you is going for five to a thousand dollars. Woo! There's that World Cup fever, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know when or if we're gonna get more World Cup related stuff, but just keep an eye on the website, jazbeescasebreaks.com. Uh, should we finish that meat story? The mate, special tea and asado meat, and football go together in Uruguay and are part of our culture. The uh, president of the football associations or meat association says, we want to convey the quality of the product, natural and sustainable, and the World Cup is the optimal time to do so. Wow, this is great public relations here. The Celeste are training this week in the United Arab Emirates ahead of the World Cup opener against South Korea on November 24th. Uruguay's national team already made their first asado in Abu Dhabi's luxurious Park Hyatt Hotel, where they are staying. Uh, Aldo Cauturico, chef of Uruguay's national team, was in charge of the barbecue. Man, that sounds great. Argentina, meanwhile, arrived in Doha, Qatar, on Thursday, and the team celebrated Wednesday's 5 nothing win over the United Arab Emirates with an asado. A total of 72 people make up the Argentinian de delegation. Argentina coach uh, Lionel Scaloni spoke about the importance of the asado as a way to unite the group. My favorite food is the asado, but it's more than that, he said. It creates an atmosphere of union and collective chemistry. Part of our culture. The Argentine idiosyncrasy, he goes on to say. It's during that time we get to talk, to laugh, relax, connect. It's not necessarily about the meat, although we love it. It's to be part of a group and the connection that it generates. Is there tailgating sauce? Uh, the tailgating is more of an American phenomenon, I think. I think if you look at soccer stadiums in like Europe and Brazil and stuff like that, they're just like, they're, they're squeezed into, you know, dense urban areas. There's Ajdin Hurstik, rookie silver for Australia, that's gonna be for Daniel. Tailgating is very much based on, you know, American car, car culture, our love for massive parking lots, and hanging out with our cars. You know, Europe, South America, Europe especially, I think you're going to see more pub culture, the public house. 76 out of 199, Casper Schmeichel for Denmark.
We got Mikel Oyerzabal, 82 out of And speaking of Uruguay, there is National Pride, Edison Cavani. I think these National Pride inserts are a little more shorter printed. This is going to go to Hun Young with the Uruguay spot. There's Daniel James, 342 at 399 for Wales. That's going to be for Ryan. Al Walker for the three lines. Another redemption. Any guesses on that? Another parallel for Brazil. Anthony, 170 out of 299. Ryan Heinz with the Brazilians. I feel like in previous years there was there was a like the country cards, but like Refractors definitely had like a little boost in secondary market value. That'll go to Jim in Japan. There's Yosko Vardal, Vardial for Croatia. That's gonna be for Ryan Heinz, rookie pink. All right, who do we have here? We have some signatures. Do I know this player? I think I do. He, uh, yeah, he's he's with Barcelona. Thirty-year-old defender. It's Sergei Roberto for España. That's going to be for Raymond in Spain. All right, we are halfway through this half case break. So far, so good. So far, so good. All right. Next box. I guess Robert is more of a central midfielder, I suppose. I thought of him more of as a defensive guy. All right, next. Mike Tower is saying you should hear Matt Damon's story on Hot Ones about attending a soccer match with his wife's uncle in Argentina. Those South American soccer matches can, uh, can get pretty wild. Oh, what's the gist of the story? Did he get into it with the people? Get in a little trouble? Mess around a little bit? A little scuffle? Brazil, by the way, apparently brought a, brought a ton of Brazilian coffee and 66 pounds of cassava flour to cook the popular Brazilian, Brazilian dish, farofa. He asked the uncle if they could go and they said no women or children talked about how, uns uh, Sam Banks says he, I believe he talked about how unsafe he felt, how overwhelming the, the expletives were. Gets rowdy. Yeah, sports, sport, 
Sports in America is rather tame compared to, uh, to say, South American soccer. There's Felix Torres, rookie hyper for Ecuador. That's going to be for Ed. There's Danny Olmo, 84 out of 199 for Spain. Raymond. Poor Sadio Mane, gonna miss the World Cup. And we got a Matthew uh, Hop, I wanna say, rookie autograph for the United States. It's gonna be for Ed. Not sure if he's officially on the roster or not, but if he is, keep an eye out for him. Unai Simon, 17 out of 75. For Spain, Raymond. And Morocco, country card, silver. It'll be for Daniel. A lot of people will be building the, that, that country card set, especially the silvers. There's uh, for Canada, that we've got Ike Ugbo, rookie pink for Grant. That could be a fun team to watch throughout the World Cup. There's uh, Anthony Contreras for Costa Rica. That's going to be for Chris. Rookie Hyper. We got Granit Zaka to 399. That's for Switzerland. That'll be for Nick Koba. Swiss actually have a decent team, too. We got Kylian Mbappe. 92 out of 299. Blue parallel for Le Bleu. That will be for Ed in France. Is Angel Di Maria. Atomic, there's Jonathan David for Canada, his rookie card. Mike saying that when the game was over, Matt Damon couldn't leave the stadium for 45 minutes because they had to leave time for the other team's bus to leave and clear the city. It still gets a little rowdy in Europe for, with team buses, you know? Fans will wait outside for the team bus because, you know, I mean, it's, like I said, the stadiums are usually in dense urban areas or dense city areas. And so there's only so many ways to get to the stadium. And a lot of times, big rivalry match still in England, and not as maybe not as violent as South America, but still get like you know eggs and spoiled cabbage thrown at thrown at these uh, these carriages. Gets pretty rowdy. I suppose some matches. I wonder if I wonder if they do that for. The old firm matches, and Rangers against Celtic, if, if they have to wait for bus or fans to clear out. Sometimes they don't let fans mix out. They'll, they'll, they want the fans to clear out too. And not just release them into the wild all at once. For, for us, for American sports, as, especially as more and more money get into, get into sports, you know, you want more and more people to fill the stadium. That means more, more families, right? More families and kids. So, American sporting events have ten tended to become a more, much more <laughs> family-friendly environment than compared to around the world. There's Justin Bijlo for the orange. That's going to go to Matthew.
And we got William Saliba. Oh, I don't know why that was turned around, but maybe it's a variation. I'll sleeve it up. Got Timothy Webb, 200 out of 299. That will be for us, Ed, in the United States. Timber! We got Urian Timber for the orange. Rookie Silver. And we got Joachim Anderson. 188 out of 399 for the Danes. Denmark. Brett. Timber! Rookie Atomic. For the Netherlands. That'll be for Matthew, Matthew D. Got a Gabriel Martin, just a base, but Gabriel Martinelli for Brazil. That'll be for Ryan Heinz. We got for Uruguay, we got Facundo Pelistri, rookie hyper. For Hung Yun. We got Zhao Cancelo for Portugal, 187 out of 199. That'll be for Ryan Heinz. We got for Morocco, Adam Massina. Daniel Smith with Morocco gets the uh, rookie silver. And we got Paul Ince. International Inc. Classic. Some of you may, may remember, uh, or may, some of you, older folk may remember him. I think his son tried to make his way into, uh, into uh, the Premier League as well. There's uh, Takumi Minamino, 381 at 399. That is uh, for Japan. Jim. Plays for Liverpool. That's his club team. We've got for Costa Rica, we've got uh, Anthony Contreras, rookie pink. And our last box coming up. Oh no. Lost a few cards, got them. All right, final box coming up. I think it's hard for us as Americans to wrap our heads around the uh, the passion that surrounds soccer, but you got to think, like, especially for your club team, you know, th other sports aren't as pop popular. You know what I mean? Like, cricket's still kind of a fringe sport. Rugby, sort of, you know, not, not too many club teams in rugby, I guess. You know, very little basketball or other sports being played. There's really no collegiate sports that you're watching. It's all soccer. Like, for if you're in England, that's it. That's all. That, that's the only sport you're following. So now for me, I follow Liverpool. I follow LA Galaxy, the Lakers, the Dodgers, the LA Kings, the Las Vegas Raiders, you know, UCLA, collegiate sports. My sporting attention is... is uh, is divided up to a lot of different to a lot of different sports, right? But but if you're if you're a kid growing up in the UK, for the most part, you're following just one team. All of your sporting attention is hyper focused onto one team. You're just living and dying with that one team. All of your disposable income that goes to you know that goes to hats and shirts and jerseys and memorabilia and trading car, all, just one team, that's it. So if all your, your sporting eggs are in just one basket, I mean, just imagine how intense you'd be about your team. If all your passions were like, listen, 
if the Dodgers, you know, choke in the playoffs, I can watch the Lakers. I can watch the Kings in the fall, right? You know, if the if the Lakers are bad, I can look forward to baseball po- like postseason, and I can look forward to spring training off season deals. You know, not this soccer. That's it. This is it. That's why. That's why the passion levels are at a at a at a fever pitch. There's Nahua Molina, rookie pink, Argentina, fever pitch, Ryan Heinz, which uh, was actually originally written as a, um, what, Nick Hornsby, I think, who also wrote High Fidelity. Uh, he's an Englishman. Fever pitch was actually about Arsenal football club. I think a lot of us know it as, uh, there's Jewison and Bennett. I think a lot of us know it as the the movie about baseball, but it was originally about uh, about soccer and Arsenal. Or we've got Lucas Paqueta, twenty five out of twenty five, nice orange for Brazil. That's going to be for Ryan Heinz. I think you can find an old movie version of the so- soccer version of. Uh, Fever Pitch. I think it stars a young uh, Colin Firth, I want to say. Some of you may know him from The English Patient, Shakespeare in Love, Bridget Jones' Diary, Love Actually, Mamma Mia. Uh, is he also in uh, like the Kingsman, th- those movies? Yeah, he's in the Kingsman movies. But I want to say, if you want to look this up, yeah, Colin Firth was in Fever Pitch, 1997 Fever Pitch. So you might be able to dig that up somewhere. I remember being uh, pretty good. Has very much an overseas, um, late 90s uh, production quality. But it's pretty good. Colin Firth is a good actor. We have Jan Sommer, 278 out of 299 for Switzerland. Right, yeah. Steve Nash. Steve Nash and Kobe Bryant both could have ended up being soccer players. Kobe stayed in Italy. There's, there's some videos of Kobe showing some of his, uh, his soccer dribbling skills during basketball shoot-arounds. You can find some videos of that. There's Bruno Fernandes. Steve Nash, uh, I've seen him do a lot of color commentary on like CBS Sports or something like that for, for Champions League matchups. You'll, you'll catch him there sometimes doing some studio work. There is Chong Woo Young, rookie silver for Korea. That's going to be for Chong Woon. Chong Won? Chong Won. We got Hassan El Haidos for Qatar. That will be for Anthony. We got Arthur Teate, 104 out of 399 for Belgium. That's going to be for David. And from David to a base, Jonathan David. Canadian rookie's pretty popular. And we got Josip Stanisic, 128 to 1, 299. Well, I screwed that one up. <laughs> Let's try that again. We got Josip Stana. We got Josip Stanisic, 120 to 199, for Croatia. We'll we'll edit that in in post production. <laughs> um, and that is for once again for Ryan Heinz and Croatia. Here's some of the highlights. Here some of the autographs. That's pretty nice, and a, and then just a bunch of a uh, bunch of numbered cards and rookies and parallels and all that fun stuff and all card ship. So especially for the rookies, it's worth looking up. You may be surprised at some how some of how well some of those rookies may do on a secondary market. You know, hold on to them and see what happens in four years, especially it's just their first year. So 
I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for getting in on all the World Cup stuff. Keep your eye out for more on the website, and, uh, and we'll break some more with you next time. Bye-bye.